might be our little tour bus right here. The first thing we did was he actually put sponsorships in the different events and that was extremely controversial at the time because people didn't want to watch ads while they were watching the games um, but of course you know they do that all the time now so you are so welcome for that <laughs> and the second thing we did was we sold bricks like the bricks you built houses Yes, so we sold 400,000 of them for $32 a piece, and that's what was used to build the park in front of us, which is Centennial Olympics Park. Um, so that's just our dedication to the Olympics, is where all of our tourist attractions are in the downtown area. Um, so on those bricks, they have like names, dates, inscriptions, really anything that people wanted to put to commemorate the game. Now, three years ago, Atlanta hosted the Super Bowl, so we decided to expand on this park. And in order to fund that expansion, we sold bricks again. This time, however, for about $65 a piece because of inflation. Um, so I don't have a brick. I was not going to pay that much for one. <laughs> but it's still worth going down there because, like I said, this is where we have all of the tourist attractions. So the College Football Hall of Fame, the Center for Sibling Human Rights, the World of Coca-Cola, and the Georgia Aquarium, all in one convenient place. Um, they have a splash pad down there so you can play in the water on warm days. Um, there's a ton of green space. You can have a nice little picnic if you really wanted to. And it's just a convenient way to get to those attractions instead of just walking on the sidewalks next to the street. And I know it's hard to see the Olympic rings from right here, but when I turn, I'm going to make a really wide turn and you'll see it from the right hand side. So you'll get a much better view of it. Um, we just gotta wait for that stage. <laughs> and you'll definitely hear me say that a lot on this tour. Yeah, my family has a brick over there. Alright. You said you have a brick down there? Yeah, my family has a brick over there. That makes sense. You ever go and visit it? Yeah, a couple oh, times. I love, yeah. I love it. Yeah, I wasn't alive during the Olympics, so I don't have a brick. <laughs> <laughs> I do not have a brick. <laughs> but I was born the next year, so maybe. No, my mom, I like, graduated oh, high school in 96. Oh, I love that. So did I. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Now, over here, on the other side of the park, we have the Nafab London Eye. <laughs> and its actual name is Skyview. So, um, this is going to run you about $15 per person. And it's a great way to see our city from up above. Now, to be honest, I've never actually been on Skyview because I'm afraid of heights. Uh, <laughs> so, that is not fun for me. We're going to do it. <laughs> oh, I, I've been told it's really nice, especially at nighttime because you can see the city all lit up and it's absolutely gorgeous. And I think right now they're doing like these date night things, like no matter what you get, where they give you a box of chocolate. Oh, oh we like a box of chocolate. We yeah. love it. Um, so, did you buy your tickets already? No. Go on Coupon, get it cheaper. Okay, thank you. Yes. <laughs> now, they have a VIP box, um, which you can see from right here is that all black one. I always tell people, don't do the VIP box. It's about $60 per person. You don't get anything special. So, <laughs> pre-COVID, you would get champagne and chocolate-covered strawberries. Post-COVID, you get nothing. So, just do the regular box. Um, it is the same here. <laughs> yep. Now, we used to have one more attraction at Centennial, and that was actually the CNN Center. Now, during COVID, CNN shut down their offices in our city. Um, that was a big deal, just because they haven't really broadcast that out of Atlanta for almost 20 years now. Um, so the only thing that was done at this particular building was a behind-the-scenes tour. Um, and we're going to see that building once we get through the next two lights. <laughs> um, so I just read that article that CNN, they was removing the signs yes. and stuff. Yes, I actually thought they were going to be doing it today. That's what I was told. Yeah, I saw that. Um, but as you can see, they're still over here. So it was not today. <laughs> uh, so I don't know exactly when they're going to take down the letters. Um, so, like I said, the building itself actually holds the world's largest freestanding escalator, meaning oh, wow. it's only attached at the top and at the bottom. That escalator is seven stories high. So I did not like that part of the tour. The rest of it was a lot of fun though. Um, but they did sell the building and like uh, you were saying, they are going to be taking down those letters because they are completely gone. Um, so not sure when they're going to take down those letters, but it's going to be a sad day. It is going to be a very sad day here because no matter how you feel about CNN, it's just, these were an icon in Atlanta. 
honestly like everybody knows about the CNN Center <laughs> um, it's a landmark here so it's just I I don't know what I'm gonna do on my tour what I'm gonna say what I'm gonna talk about when I come over here <laughs> because it's just a really big chunk now I'm excited to see what's gonna happen over here because this is a prime location um, it's gonna be very exciting personally I hope they put in a Grammys museum um, I just think it makes a lot of sense. Atlanta does have a lot of musical influence, um, but the city doesn't listen to me when I tell them what to do. <laughs> so we will see what happens. <laughs> but you can see those big letters coming up over on our right hand side. And now I will say on the inside, they do have a food court. It's nothing to write home about, but they do have a clean public restroom. So I do like pointing that out to people. Kids to move. <laughs> They're a future concert. I'm telling you, they come in early. Yes. Are we going through this? Because right next door is State Farm Arena, and this is where that concert's gonna be at tonight. Which concert? Future. Future. Let's try to get tickets. I'm trying to get tickets. Um, the concert starts at seven. So come on down. Come on down. Um, so stay from arena, we got to get through the light, but this is where our basketball team, the Atlanta Hawks play. Um, and you're not going to get a good view of major arts before the concert. This is where that concert will be held. But the crown jewel of all of our stadiums is directly in front of us. And that is Mercedes Benz. But we just call her the Benz. So this is where our football team, the Atlanta Falcons play, and then our soccer as well. When they finished building the bids, it came out to $1.9 billion. Yes, they put a lot of money into the stadium. One of my favorite things is that the roof comes off just like a convertible, so they can choose to play open air if they want to. Oh, that's cool. Right? Now, Atlanta was not supposed to be a soccer city, but the very first year we got our team, we were the major league soccer champions. And since then, we have done so well that we are now going to be holding one of the 2026 World Cup games. Um, so definitely come down here for that. It is definitely worth it. I personally won't be in the city because that's too many people. And I learned my lesson with the Super Bowl. So I will be gone. Now, over on our left-hand side, y'all can actually see the world Take us away from the stadium just because I told y'all every single thing I know. Um, and we do have a lot more to see on this tour. And I want to make sure we can get everywhere we need to go to get. Like, why would you stop in the middle of the road? Yeah, I'm just letting you know we're not in any hurry. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just looking at them like, why would they stop in the middle of the intersection? Because that was wild. Oh, my goodness. Those gray beans actually spell out Atlanta. Oh, they do. Yeah. So whenever Hawks are having a home game, they'll do a drone shot of this. Uh, so if you ever watch us play on TV, just look out for it. And then you can say, oh my goodness, I've seen that in person. <laughs> it's definitely not as big or shiny. <laughs> See, I got, I got a chuckle because nobody ever laughs at that. <laughs> and I was like, I'm going to keep saying it until somebody does something. Yeah, somebody will like it eventually. <laughs> As we go forward, you'll start to notice that there is just like a little bit of construction going on. Like when I turn, you'll see it. And that's actually because they have broken ground on Centennial Yards. Now, it's exciting that we're getting all of this housing here in the downtown area just because Atlanta is one of the fastest growing cities in the United States. We currently have about 6 million people in our metro area alone. And we are... Unless you're going to something at one of the stadiums or you're going to an attraction at Centennial, we do not come down here. Um, a lot of these businesses close around 5, 30, 6 o'clock because of that. Um, they cater to because of our state capitol building, which is over on our right-hand side. <laughs> so that gold you see is real 23 karat gold, and it's mined in a little town up north called Delonica. And I know the sun is in y'all's eyes, so I'm sorry about that. That's okay. Um, it feels good. But a lot of times, you know, we learned in school that San Francisco had the first gold rush in the United States, but that was a lie because Georgia did. Um, so we were actually 20 years before, and it was a smaller gold rush, but it was a gold rush nonetheless. It happened in a little town up north called Delonica. 
Um, now you can still go up to the Lanaga and mine for gold, but you do have to pay for that. So every few years they will scrape that gold off and replace it. So I always say just stay or underneath same, the castle same. or same thing in the tree. <laughs> <laughs> now there's a woman at the very top of that building. Do y'all see her? So her name is Miss Freedom, and I always say that she's the younger sister of the Statue of Liberty in New York. But she does have a torch in her hand, and it's supposed to be a beacon welcoming everybody to the city. So welcome to Atlanta, y'all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, welcome to Atlanta. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Now I will say, even though underground is empty right now and it's closed, they are trying to revitalize this area. Um, a guy just bought it about a year ago. He wants to put in like a housing for the university that's over here. He wants to put in a hotel. But my favorite thing is that he wants to put in the first grocery store in downtown Atlanta. Um, so I think that would be amazing. But he doesn't have any investors. So. <laughs> well, that's a problem. Right. So it's going to take some time for that to happen. So we'll see. <laughs> Now, as we drive forward, you will notice that there are signs saying welcome. If you look down, you're going to see like brick crosswalks. And that's because we are actually on Georgia State University's campus. So we've actually been on Georgia State's campus this entire time, but now it's just a little bit more noticeable. Um, Georgia State is actually the largest school in the state of Georgia. So not only is there a downtown campus, there are five satellite campuses all around the city. However, this is the main one. About 50,000 students attend this particular campus, but out of those 50,000, only about 5,000 live on campus housing. Live in on campus housing, excuse me. Um, so when people think about Atlanta, they don't think of us as a college town, but we are. Not only do we have Georgia State, we also have Georgia Tech, there's Emory University, Oklahoma University, and then we have the historic black colleges, which are Spelman, Morehouse, Clark Atlanta, Morehouse School of Medicine, Morris Brown, there's the Interdominational Theological Seminary, and Savannah College of Art and Design has a campus down here as well. Uh, so when I say we're a place of higher learning, I really do mean it because that is only talking about the four-year option. <laughs> now, I always tell people, when you're in the state of Georgia, please play our lottery. We did, but we lost last night. No! no. So, so you don't mention, you don't talk about uh, Walters? I don't. Uh. I don't know about Walters, they don't care. Uh. Um, and it also depends on my timing. Um, everything's about time. I got you. so much work. No, that's cool. I was just curious. I was like, wow, she didn't mention Walter? <laughs> like, everybody, my dad's dad shopped at Walter. I remember I got my first pair of Air Force Ones. Me too. Like, yeah, like, everybody go to Walter, but I got you. <laughs> Walter's is a very, I don't know if I should say famous, but infamous shoe store. Um, literally, when you find, like, when there's, like, a big shoe drop, you will find the lines wrap around. Oh, the, yeah. the street at Walters. They have, I mean, it's a very big, famous shoe store. Yeah, like all the celebrities famous. shop there. Yeah, the everybody celebrities there. shop there. It's a it name drops and songs. Um, I think the one, I don't know if it's in the song, but like when I think of Walters, I think of the song Welcome to Atlanta with Jermaine Dupri. Yeah, they go shopping. Yeah. There. yeah. It, it's, but it was on the corner at Georgia State. It doesn't look like much. So no, it don't. When you pass it, you're like, mm, I don't know if I should be shopping there. But yes, Daniel Hall is sitting on is called Herndon Plaza, and it's named after Alonzo Herndon, Atlanta's first black millionaire. So Alonzo was born a slave in Social Circle, Georgia, which is about 40 miles away from here. And after the Civil War, his family gained emancipation. So he became an entrepreneur and he opened up a barber shop. Now the shop did extremely well. He went on to have marble floors, crystal chandeliers, fur rugs. So you know, he was making money. But eventually Alonzo said, I like cutting hair, but my life's passion is actually selling life insurance, <laughs> which is of course the next natural step. <laughs> so he opened up a business called the Atlanta Life Insurance Company. And their original building is gonna be coming up on our left-hand side. Uh, we just have to wait and see if these cars are gonna be far enough for us to see it. But this is Tana White one right over here. I never okay. knew that. Okay. 
Uh, Atlanta life is. No, don't even worry because before I started this job, I passed these buildings all the time. I didn't know any of this. <laughs> so it is all right. <laughs> so there it is. The Atlanta Life Insurance Company. And they were in this particular building from 1905 to 1927. Now, the Atlanta Life Insurance Company is still around to this day. Um, and I think it's absolutely amazing. Now, they are no longer obviously in this building. Their location is actually up on Peachtree Street, close to Midtown. Um, I heard they were gonna turn this building into a boutique hotel, but I've been hearing that for almost five years now. So, not sure about that one. But if you look on the bottom right-hand corner, there's a black and white picture. Do y'all see that? Mm -hmm. That is Alonzo. So at least for now, they have this picture on his building, which I think is really nice and a great way to honor him and his legacy. Um, we'll see what happens, but I do hope that they'll do something with that building because it does have good bones. Um, so why not do something with it, you know? Now the next thing I'm going to show y'all is also coming up on our left hand side. Um, the peach column. It's not that good. Oh no? Yeah. I had it. I was so disappointed because I like one of the other restaurants on my tour. So I'm like, yeah, we're going to go. No. That looks fun in there, the Caribbean restaurant. Oh, Mango's is delicious. Their curry goes to die for. Yes, I love Mango. Let's see, I'm going to let this car go by because the next place that I point out is actually next door to Mango's. <laughs> um, and that is the Royal Peacock. So back in the day, this was known as the Majestic Theater. And you know you made it in the entertainment industry when you performed here. So we've had people from Aretha Franklin, Gladys Knight, B.B. King, Stevie Wonder, Ella Baker. You know, the great music industry. They've all performed at this venue at least one point in their careers, if not more. Now, today, this is a reggae club, so they say, I've never seen it open in the five years I've worked this job. So, not sure about that one. Um, but I am glad that the building is still standing because it is a piece of history. So, you know, why not have it there? Um, and I always point out that the music is coming from Mango's, the restaurant. So, just so y'all know, I am not lying. <laughs> But the last thing I like to point out over here is also coming up on our left hand side. You're gonna see a church on the corner, and that church is Big Bethel AME, and that stands for African Methodist Episcopal Church. And this is the oldest black church in the city of Atlanta. Now, during the civil rights movement, this is kind of like a town hall, so a lot of important meetings were held over here, a lot of decisions were made over here. One of my favorite things about Big Bethel is that one of our historic black colleges called Morris Brown was actually founded in the basement of this building. Is it, is it still open? His name is John Wesley Dobbs, and he was considered the unofficial mayor of Sweet Auburn. So the piece is called through his eyes because you're able to go behind him, look through his eyes, and see what hurt his community. And that's, of course, the highway. The highway. Yes. I just, when I, oh, I wow. tell you, when I first started the job, deep. I used to come over here and cry because I was just like, that's, wow. That's very emotional. Right? <laughs> now, you may not have heard of John Wesley Dobbs, but I guarantee you have heard of his grandson, Maynard Jackson. He was the first black mayor in the city of Atlanta, and he's the Jackson in Hartsfield Jackson International Airport. So I always tell people if you've ever heard of our airport, then you've definitely heard of it, which I think the legacy of their family is really cool. <laughs> now, starting from about right here onwards, we're going to go to the Martin Luther King Jr. National Park. So I always point out the SCLC over on our left-hand side, and that is the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. So Dr. King was one of the co-founders of the SCLC, and he was the very first president. Now let me tell y'all something. Believe it or not, they just put up that historical marker last month. Yes, I was so upset because this is the SCLC. <laughs> and y'all just put up a historic marker. And this wasn't even like a national historic marker. This is just done by the city of, I mean, the state of Georgia. Yeah. I'm sorry, that's the Atlantic Historic Society. So it's not even like a, a national thing. This is done by the city of Atlanta. I was shocked. Um, but the SCLC is still around to this day, and they mainly focus on nonviolent social justice to change here in the U.S. So personally, I think the work they do is extremely important. I do not envy them. <laughs> what are they doing? <laughs> That's another historic tour. Oh. But it's a walking tour. Oh, no, we're not doing that. Yeah, don't envy them <laughs> at all. Now, I said before we're on the King National Park, but this is the only became a federal park four years ago. 
Um, so they're still in the very early stages of revitalization. So you can see on our left hand side, they have since put in a restaurant in a community museum. That was only about two years ago. And I heard you say you were looking them up. Because <laughs> I would not be covered in. Now, directly in front of us is the main part of the King National Park. And because it is almost MLK Day, like, it's jumping over here. So, of course, we are going to get out. We do have a 10-minute stop over here regardless. Um, and because, oh, no, they closed the church. So, you can't go inside, unfortunately. But if you come back, um, you will be able to go inside the original Ebenezer Baptist Church over on our right-hand side. Um, so, on the inside, you can sit in the original pews, listen to the King Summers on the loudspeakers, and because this is a federal park, uh, they do have rangers in there. So, I definitely recommend coming back in the future if you get the chance because it's amazing. It truly is. Um, I have seen so many grown people cry. So many. Uh, because it really is that movie. Now, back in 1999, the congregation of Ebenezer outgrew this original church. So right across the street, they built the new Ebenezer, which you can see from right over here. Um, Georgia just re-elected a senator by the name of Raphael Warnock, and he's the head pastor over here. So he does actually preach while he's working up in D.C. I don't know how he does it. <laughs> Excuse me, I would go crazy. That's a lot of work. Now, right next door to the new Ebenezer, we have the Visitor Center. Um, they have a really nice civil rights walk of fame, and in the springtime, there is an absolutely gorgeous rose garden. So, definitely come back for that. What up, what up, what up, Mission Partners 1225, man, and yes, sir, man, we on a tour of Atlanta. Yes, a tour of Atlanta. It's actually pretty cool. I don't know how the angles are going to come out, but I do know how... Um, this tour is pretty cool, learning a lot, learning a lot, learning about Atlanta history. And we had the Civil Rights Museum, you know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna go check out the, uh, the tombs of Coretta Scott King and Martin Luther King. Yeah, man, we on this tour. So I'll see y'all in a minute, but yeah, we out here. Yes, sir. Shout out to Samantha, our driver, driving us around. And um, yeah, let's see where we wind up at. pictures over here um shout out to samantha our tour guide we're gonna go get us a cinnabon so if you're down here uh on this particular tour you can only get 10 minutes so pretty cool to see the tomb we're gonna go get us a cinnabon and i'm gonna see y'all in a minute so this is our ride job our little e-cart if you open up the front door and the back door you can uh, see straight to the house like you're looking down the barrel of a shotgun now the reason why we need shotguns that is how the air flows through the home to cool it down now because these are duplexes or two houses next to each other these are actually called double barrel shotguns and that is the most <laughs> southern thing I have ever heard and I love it <laughs> now you will notice that there are uh, signs that private above residence. like the mailboxes yes it says private residence that is because people live inside these homes. They pay rent to the National Park Service. That money goes directly back into this particular park and it helps maintain this area. And honestly, it is my favorite thing about this place. I think it is such a great use of that money. 
Um, one of the stipulations that the King family had when they sold this place to the National Park Service was that it was risk control um, and that these families never left. Uh, they oh, never had cool. to leave. It was passed down through the generations. So it is very, very cool. I'm gonna let this car go by us because they were trying to speed down. This is not great. But the thing that everybody wants to see when they come over here is over on our right hand side is the brown and yellow house. This is the birthplace and childhood home of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Oh, wow. So you can actually take a free tour of the inside of this house. Um, the King family donated pictures and furniture so the inside is authentic to how it was when Dr. King was younger. I recommend the tour because throughout the years the roads have expanded so they realized they couldn't enforce it. But that was a whole idea. They wanted to just show off your garden. So we're going to go through, I'm going to tell y'all a few stories, and then hopefully by the time we leave, you'll like this place just as much as I do. Now over on our right hand side, do y'all see this black box? Mm -hmm. It has a light on the top and a lock on the door. Do y'all think this is a telephone booth, a jail cell, or a public restroom? Public restroom. Okay, we've got one public restroom. Two public restrooms. Jail cell. One jail cell. I'll go with the other option. <laughs> <laughs> <Telephone booth. laughs> I only have one right answer, and that is because it is actually a jail cell. Good job, babe. Was that a lucky guess, or did you know? I read it on, uh, <laughs> I read it, uh, it was about a couple months ago. Really? A guy did a whole thing about it. Really? Yep. yep. Oh my goodness. Well, yes. And I passed it probably like a million times. Right? It's crazy, because it doesn't look like a jail cell. Well, it's actually name is Lockout Box. So, Inman Park was founded in 1890, so they did not have cars coming through here. And like I said before, we're two miles away from downtown, and that's where the main jail was located. So we're going to walk those two miles to the main jail. So instead, they had these all over again. He was a Methodist minister, uh, but he did help found a school called Emory Universe. Oh, wow. Right. Okay. He made his mark on the city, um, just not by Coke. And then right next door to Warren, I yeah. Right next door to Warren, he lived his older brother, Asa, with the brick house. <laughs> Just a little bit bigger. So this was Asa Candler's starter mansion, which I really love saying because he doesn't have a starter mansion. Um, when he built it, it was $13,000. So that's what 13000 would get you back in the 18th. Every time I came over here for a tour, I was like, oh, she's getting it done. She is doing that. And then on the third day, I was like, oh my goodness, she's done. <laughs> now we are in the uh, commercial side of uh, Inman Park. This is just known as the village. And the village is very small, so we're not going to be over here long. This is the entrance, that first stop sign. And then we have another stop sign getting us out of it. And the village focuses on food. So the sun is going to yes. be in your eyes. Um, it's small though. So the first place I always point out is over on our left hand side. And that is Beetle Patch. Now, in 2018, a magazine in Maine voted this best lobster roll in the world. Oh, um, wow. Yes. Now, I've had that lobster roll. Is it good? It was delicious. Uh -huh. But I thought it was $40. Oh my God. Yes. So that was a one time thing. Right. <laughs> I will never have again. <laughs> But it was good that one time. Um, I can't even see where I'm going. And before that, it was Howard Elementary School. So it's gone through all of the grades. But the reason why I pointed out is because at one point in time, Mayor Jackson, John Wesley Dobbs, and Dr. King all went to school here. So a lot of great minds are able to flourish at Howard. Um, so that does mean we get to see who else is going to come out of here one day. I usually tell a joke here, but I can't remember how I set it up. <laughs> so I'm sorry about that. But the end joke is that we're gonna see who else comes out of here. Maybe it'll be the first woman president, but we already know it's not gonna be me because I didn't go to school there and then y'all are supposed to be like, ah, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> so, I just want you to know, it is a good joke. <laughs> but, <laughs> Um, I do like coming this way because it lets me show you where we are at. So when I get to this light, you're going to be able to see on our left hand side, it will say Martin Luther King Jr. National Historic Park and Preservation District. This is the back side of the King Center, y'all. We just made a big circle. Um, I love pointing this out because Atlanta is a very small city. <laughs> I told you it's small. It, it is small. 
Uh, the thing that makes us seem so large is the traffic. You are sitting in that traffic for so long, you feel like you're going somewhere. I promise you, you're not. You are not. You can see this traffic. You, you are sitting in traffic. And why would you sit in the middle of the intersection? That is crazy. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. We are not doing this. Why would you do that? That's crazy. That is craziness. Madness is what I'm telling you. Um, this is traffic. You're sitting in it. You feel like you're going somewhere. You're not. Um, a lot of times, whenever you want to do something, it's going to be within about a 10 to 15 mile radius of the downtown area. Um, I know Reno saying it's like the biggest small town in the U.S. It should be Atlanta. Yeah. And the crazy thing is, we're so small. Everybody knows each other. I promise you, everybody knows each other because we really are that small. Um, and this tour, um, I wonder whose tour is this? Parking up my view. <laughs> and think, no, that is not where you stop. That is not where the stop is. You park down there. These are some non touring people. That's the problem. So maybe we should stop and jump out. We are not jumping out. Look, they're going to hit you. That's the <laughs> These people that are like, hit you. You're supposed to park down there. Oh, well, these might be. Okay, so this is the skyline. Boy, Mr. 1225, man, and we are coming to a close on this vlog, y'all, man. It's been a great hell of a weekend. Um, I had some awesome food, great company, and uh, yeah, Skyview, check it out if y'all come to Atlanta. Miss Samantha, appreciate that tour. Y'all gonna see her talking about all the little spots in Atlanta, man. We did this, man. 2023, I told you, we going up. I'm taking y'all outside, I'm showing y'all the city. Showing y'all around, man. Bringing, trying to bring different heat to the camera, y'all. I'm gonna see y'all on the next one. Peace. <laughs>